megapixels don't matter. And I'm going to do a little test. I'm going to take this 18 megapixel camera and compare it to a 12 megapixel camera. Without knowing any more about them, place your bets now on what you think will be the camera that produces the best photos. And I'm going to go and have a little wander and see what happens. Oh, I'm in Miami, by the way. Come to Florida with this Sony Cybershot, which was found in a thrift shop in Holland for just a few euros. I've never used it, I know nothing about it, other than it's 18 megapixels, which is all I need for this test. So I'll let future me tell you more about it, because I really need to work out how to use this thing. Even though it's almost 10 years old, the Sony Cybershot DSC WX350, to give it its full name, has more megapixels than all but the latest iPhones. It cost more than $300 when it came out in 2014 and has a huge 20x zoom, meaning the focal range goes from 25mm to 500mm. Oh, that's dirty. The lens aperture goes from f3.5 to 6.5, which won't excite the sort of people who think they need f1.4 lenses, but should have decent depth of field and let some light into the lens when wide. But the biggest concern at the moment is the lack of shooting in RAW, which means the JPEG images won't capture as much information when it comes to editing them later. The FX3, on the other hand, does shoot in RAW, but only has two-thirds the amount of pixels. It also costs ten times as much as the Cybershot, the best part of £4,000. And that's just the body. The 16-35 to f2.8 lens on here will set you back another two grand. That extra cash means the lens lets more light onto the 35mm full-frame sensor, so it can shoot in darker settings without getting as noisy, and has more depth of field when wide open. But this isn't meant to be a camera for photography, it's primarily a video camera for filmmakers that has just been used to shoot the Hollywood movie, The Creator. People get obsessed with stats on paper and technical specifications. They want bigger numbers and more numbers and somehow think that's going to be the answer to taking better quality photos. But I'm not quite sure that's true. So how will an 18 megapixel stills camera compare to a 12 megapixel video camera? Let's go and have a little wander around Miami and take some photos, starting here, the sunrise on Hollywood Beach. Okay, so for anyone that knows Miami, I got it wrong. I'm not on Hollywood Beach, I'm on Dania Beach. We were meant to go to Hollywood Beach, we ended up coming here. Hello, Mashed and Coca. Huh? What frustrates me about the Sony Cybershot is I'm just not used to shooting in auto and it's pretty much all auto. I much prefer to shoot in manual and this doesn't quite give me the control I'm used to. So it looks sometimes like it's going to blow out the images and there's not much I can do about it. But I have found a little setting which kind of lets you crudely control whether you want the image to be brighter or darker. But to be fair to this 10 year old camera, the photos do look pretty good, at least on the back of the screen. Right, let's go to some other places, take some more photos and this time I'll show you what cameras they're taking on. I started on our Miami rooftop with a great view of the city in golden light and forgot the Cybershot doesn't have a viewfinder. Starting off with a wide on the Cybershot and then an optical zoom apparently at 86 millimeters, not too bad. Then this really nice shot from the FX3 and this is a digital crop which looks quite nice. And then here we see the FX3 just has a little bit more dynamic range. And here we're gonna see that it has probably a little bit more sharpness as well. You'd hope so for almost 6,000 pounds more. Yep, that's what I'm filming the video stuff on. Right, let's have a little walk around Miami, just taking some photos on the Cybershot. I love this area around Lincoln Road, so let's bring back some comparisons between the two cameras. I won't say much at this point, I'll let you make your own mind up on what you see. Now I'm going to make my way towards the beach for the sunset and see how these two cameras hold up at my favourite time of day.
Here's an example of the difference in dynamic range between these two cameras, with the FX3 able to capture more of that sky. Although I'm not sure in these images you're going to see on the beach at sunset that there's a huge difference, although I do think the FX3 looks a little bit cleaner and perhaps creamier and a little bit sharper compared to some of these that look a little bit dirty from the cyber shot. Okay, when I saw this guy riding along the beach, I already knew what I had to do when I get home. Here's the original, here's a little bit of Dehancer magic, and here's what I had to do in Photoshop. Solid effort from the Cybershot here, but this FX3 version just has a little bit more class, and now a little more Dehancer magic. It's a video. It's a video now, yeah. Yeah, model. Model for me, oh yeah. Thanks to Dan for not only modeling for me, but also providing one or two clips that have made their way into this video. And the light is starting to fade now on the beach, so I'm having to pump up the ISO on the FX3, but it still looks pretty good. But we're about to put the cyber shot to the test. But before we do that, I'm gonna use Liam as a bit of a model and turn his phone brightness up. So the sun has gone down, it's basically night time now, there's very little light left. The FX3 is still coming in strong. This crane has a lot of fine detail, so let's see how it copes with that. Absolutely fine, but the cyber shot, oh, it's all gone a bit noisy and a bit horrible, and it just can't keep up. The FX3 proving that it is possible to take shots at this time of night with such low light. So here's a little selection of them from around downtown. Then it was time to head home and get some rest before doing it all again the next morning. So if you haven't worked it out by now, back when we showed you those first photos when they were labeled camera A and camera B, camera A was the cyber shot and camera B was the FX3. But while you look at these photos and videos and me walking around at sunrise in the Hollywood area of Miami, I just wanted to explain that when I'm editing these photos in Lightroom, I'm not trying to get them exactly the same as each other. That's really not the point. And also, I don't have the time. So I just want them to be representative of what was captured by each camera and then put my own personal edit spin on how these look. So some just have basic Lightroom adjustments, some have some presets applied, others might have a little sprinkling of Dehance and Magic, but I'll always try and point that out when that's the case. But I'm usually trying to get them to be processed in the same way, often just copying the Lightroom settings to the other image and sometimes giving it a little tweak to get a little bit closer. To talk a little bit more about how I've been getting on with the FX3, let's go back to the beach. The FX3 is not a stills camera, it's a video camera, it's an entry level cinema camera. But I have to say, even though it's only 12 megapixels, I'm really impressed with this. I'm really impressed with this as a stills camera. It's auto, it's manual, it's whatever you want it to be. I started off taking photos in its intelligent auto mode and they were pretty damn good. But there's sometimes a bit like with the cyber shot where you want a bit more control over those kind of skies. So uh, the manual mode on this has been really helpful. And on the back of the screen, these photos look great. They look really polished. They look ready to post. They almost look like they've had a filter on them, or they at least look like they've been into an editing program and had some of the, uh, the settings tweaked. So I'm really, really surprised and excited about how good the photos are looking on this. Might have to go and take some more. Also, I'm filming this little section about the FX3 on the Sony Cybershot. It's not really meant to do video, but uh, it can. If I was making this video just to see if the 10-year-old Cybershot was still capable of taking nice photos in 2024, then I'd say yes. Yes, it is. It's only when it's unfairly compared to the £6,000 FX3 that its shortcomings are highlighted. Firstly, it may have a huge 20x zoom, but in real terms, there's not nearly enough stabilization to make it work without being on a tripod. 
Secondly, the biggest differences in the photos were dynamic range and in low light, which can probably be blamed on the sensor. In the cyber shot, it's only six millimeters by four millimeters, compared to the 35 millimeters by 23 millimeter one in the FX3. And that's a huge difference. Smaller sensors can be high in noise, low in sensitivity, and low in dynamic range, issues which are really highlighted at night. But while this comparison may have been unfair, it was deliberate to prove a point that megapixels don't matter. Or more fairly, megapixels aren't the most important thing. We clearly showed that 12 megapixel images can be better than 18 megapixel images. Yes, having more can be useful for cropping in, but it's no use cropping in on an image that looks crap to begin with. I think the Cybershot actually held up pretty well. It can still be a fun choice for social media or family photos, but if you're tempted to buy one, I'd probably say you're better off taking photos on your phone. It's thrown a spanner in the works, hasn't it?